For a long time, I've been interested in knowing who the Jewish people were, but in fact, I haven't been alone. For instance, in 1921, Albert Einstein wrote a letter to the Berlin rabbis in which he wondered whether the Jews were a religious group, an ethnic group, or both. With the sequencing of the human genome, it became possible to analyze whole genomes in individuals. And in 2007, I thought that I would organize a project that became known as the Jewish HapMap Project. I approached Ed Burns, the executive dean at Einstein, whether he wanted to partner in the project, and he agreed. So we started off by studying European and Middle Eastern Jews uh, who live in the New York area. And we demonstrated that there was a shared basis for their Jewishness, that they were pretty closely spaced to each other in terms of uh, genetic distances. Now, a genetic distance is like a geographical distance. It measures how far people are from one another. And with the genetic distances so close between Jews, uh, it suggested that there was a common basis for their Jewishness. More recently, we extended these findings to North African Jews, and we've just published a study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. And we found that North African Jews, like their co-religionists, uh, share similar or origins and similar genetic proximity to one another. And so we concluded from this study that there is a biological basis for Jewishness for most Jewish people. As a medical geneticist in New York City, I study many populations. I'm interested not only in the genetics of Jewish people, but the whole melting pot of New York City. My work encompasses Hispanic and Latinos and African Americans, as well as Jewish and European populations. And from studying genetic risks in one group, in fact, we can learn about risks that affect other groups. So our goal is to develop a personalized medicine for the people of New York City, and understanding their ethnic origins is important for understanding their genetic risks as well.